Okay, this is the 2014 uh, sample paper two. Okay, we're going to do the fundamental uh, principle of counting. Okay, now basically the definition for there is if there is uh, x ways, if there's x ways of uh, doing, so that's the ways of the x way of doing one operation. And y ways of doing a second operation, and z ways of doing a third operation. Then the number of ways. Of doing, doing the first operation followed by the second and third operation is x multiplied by y multiply by z. Now I'll give you everyday example of this okay uh, if you happen to be getting dressed in the morning okay and you're talking about uh, just general wear okay so what you have is uh, you have trousers okay you have your shirts and you have uh, let's say a hat okay now this person let's assume that they always wear hats shirts and uh, trousers okay so if he has uh, six pairs of trousers, five uh, different shirts, and three different hats, how many different ways can he get dressed, just referring to these three items of clothes? It would be basically six, multiplied by five, multiplied by three, which would give you your 90 different ways. So that's what the fundamental uh, principle of counting is basically saying, okay? An operation happens to be just your choice or an outcome, okay? Now, next one, okay. How many different ways is there are there to arrange five distinct objects in a row? Now, distinct objects means they're completely different, okay. So what we do here is we set up uh, our five boxes, okay. Now we have five different objects, okay. Means I can select five objects for the first box. Once I've cho chosen an object, I have four left. Then I have three left two left and one left. Now I use the fundamental principle of counting to multiply these out. And there's a special button for this. When you're going five, four, three, two, one, all the way down, there's a button called factorial. Okay, and you'll see, the, you'll see it here, above the x to the power of minus one sign, and that'll do that for you. So I'll give you 120, okay? Peter is arranging books on a shelf. He has five novels and three poetry books. He wants to keep the five novels together and the three poetry books together. And how many different ways can he arrange the books? Okay. So basically, Peter has uh, eight positions up for grabs. Okay. So if we're to just do it like this. So if he's to fit all all the books together, he needs five. He needs eight slots. Okay. So we have uh, one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So what happens is the novels have to come together, okay? So the novels are gonna be uh the novels are gonna occupy the blue area here, okay? And this is gonna be where the novels are. And we're in the novel section, we have five Five can occupy the first slot in the novel section, four can occupy the second, three can occupy the third, two and one. Then we're going to get the uh, the poetry section which is here, okay, three books can occupy the first section, two books can occupy the second section and one book can occupy the third section. Now if we're to uh, multiply these out, we're talking about five factorial 
for the blue part and 3 factorial for the green part okay and what we get here is 5 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial 3 factorial and we get 720 okay now the problem is with the 720 is it doesn't take into consideration that I could also have arranged it this way where I put the poetry section in front of the novel section okay so I put the poetry section ahead of the novel section look what happens this time okay one two three four six seven eight okay and we would have had three two one on this side exact same as last time and then on the other side I would have had five four three two one it's the same thing except I reversed the poetry and the novel section so this means and means I need to multiply this answer by two to get one thousand four hundred and forty okay and that concludes the end of question one okay question two a bias die is used in the game uh, the probabilities of getting six different numbers are shown on the dice in the table below okay what is the expected value of the random variable x where x is the number thrown okay now expected value is basically your average okay and what it's called is e of x now e of x is the sum of it's your probability or your outcome multiplied by it's your it's your value of your outcome multiplied by its probability so it's basically you add them all together okay so it's the sum of the, nu the number multiplied by its probability okay so what we're going to get here is this 1 times 0.25 uh, 2 times 0.25 3 times 0.15 4 times 0.15 5 times 0.1 plus 6 times 0.1 yeah that's 6 multiplied by 0.1 at the end there okay so all you gotta do is just enter this into the calculator see what I get okay so it's gonna be 1 bracket 0.25 plus uh, 2 multiply by 0.25 plus 3 multiplied by 0.15 plus 4 multiplied by 0.15 plus 5 bracket 0.15 or sorry 0.1 plus 6 multiplied by 0.1 okay and what we get here is 2.9 over 10 basically 2.9 okay now the thing is about the thing is about expected value is it means the average now what you got to remember of probability is all of these probabilities add up to a hundred percent okay or they all add up to the number one because they're in decimal form now look at it this way we could change it into des into percentages if we want this is 25 this is 25 this is 15 15 10 and 10 and another way of coming at it would be to do uh, expected value is just basically the way of getting the average so if we were to throw it 100 times in total 25 times out of 100 it land on 1 25 times out of 100 it land on 2 10 times out of 100 it land on 6 so technically we can do like the average if you if you really wanted to okay so what we could do is uh, we could go into stat mode and we could do uh, we could do one variable now we need the frequency on okay so what we could do here is uh, we could go down to uh, stat mode here number three put the frequency on and we could try it a different way okay so stat one variable and this time we have the frequency so we have one two three four five and six okay and what we could get this time is 25 25 15 15 10 and 10 okay close it off now let's figure out what the mean is press shift then stat sorry shift stat
stats, number four for variable, and then we can go for the main, which is number two. And once again, 2.9, okay? So exactly what we're expecting. So there's two different ways of doing it, okay? If you happen to forget the expected value, okay? So V of X, or the average, equals 2.9. Now, there's a game at the fun fair. It costs three euro to play the game. The player rolls a die once and wins the, the back, wins back the number of euros shown a die. The sentence below describes the difference between using the both biased die and using a fair, fair unbiased die when playing this game. But doing the calculation required, complete this sentence. If you com if you play the game many times with a fair die you will win an average of something but if you play with a biased die you will lose an average of something per game okay well your your gain or loss in a game is basically uh, how much you win it's the amount of money you, uh, you win on average minus the price per game okay so that's both of them okay so what we know about what we know about uh, whether we're gaining we're gaining or losing money is it's the average win minus the price per game. So what we can say is on a uh, on the on the biased dice, which is uh, this one here. If this wasn't biased, they'd all have the same number. Okay, it'd be a hundred divided by six, which would be around sixteen point six seven percent. Okay not 25% so this here is the bias die okay so for the bias die the average win is going to be 2 euro 90 or the expected value we're going to get 2 euro 90 and we're going to take away uh, we're going to take away 3 euro because that's the price per game and what happens there is we're going to get a uh, 10 cents okay so 10 cents which is not what we're uh, so we're going to be losing 10 cents per game okay next thing we gotta do is uh do up the expected value of the uh do up the expected value of the fair dice okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a table like the last one and here's what we're gonna do okay so we're gonna do number and probability now the number it's the same as last time one two three four five and six now this time the probability changed because you have a one in six chance every time of getting any of these numbers that's when it's a fair probability now remember the expected value can be done two ways it can be done by averaging it or it can be done by can done by average or it can be done by uh, getting the um, mean okay okay now to get the expected value you could even use your calculator to do this again okay now last time we actually did it in percentage mode if you played 100 games but as it turns out as well you don't even need to do that what you can just do is one variable okay and you can put down your your three your five or sorry six different outcomes now in frequency mode, what you can do as well is you can just put in, you can just uh, put in the number you want. So it's going to be a six each time. Okay, so one c six, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, and one sixth. Okay, do what we did last time. Remember, it's just again the average. Okay, stat. Uh, variable and we're going to go for the mean again and this time it's 3 euro 50 so the expected value is 3 euro 50 or the average value is 3 euro 50 now remember what we said it's your it's your value or it's your average win per game minus the cost of playing the game so if we take 3 euro away from 350 we're going to get 50 cent per game is that alright? Now, the next one, right? The points A, B, and C have coordinates as follows. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put these on the uh, coordinate diagram, okay? So what we're going to get is 3, 5. So 3 up, 5 here is A. Minus 6, 2. B. And then C is 4 minus 4, which is here. Okay. Next thing, find the equation of the line AB. Well, first of all, you need to look up the uh, equation of a line. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first way is uh, we're going to label A and B. So A is 3, 5, X1, Y1, and B is uh, minus 6, 2, which is going to be X2, Y2. Now, we have X1 and Y1. What we don't have is the slope. So we need the slope formula, which is going to be uh, M, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. We're going to put that into the uh, equation of a line formula. And then we get is Y minus 5 equals uh, M. We have to figure out what M is. So M is going to be Y2, 2 minus Y1, 2 minus 5, divided by uh, minus 6 minus 3, which is going to be minus uh, 3 over minus 9. You put that in the calculator and you get a third. So it's going to be a third into x minus x1, which is 3. Cross multiply up to 3, and we're going to get 3y minus 15 equals x minus 3. Bring the 15 and the x over the other side, so we're going to get 0 equals x minus 3y. It's going to be minus 3 plus 15, which is going to be plus 12. And so our equation of our line, if we turn that around again, it's going to be x minus 3y plus 12 equals 0. Okay, now there will be another way of doing this, okay, and involves just mainly using a graph as opposed to the two formulas. What we could have done, especially if you have it done nice and accurately, is to just 3, 5, just about here. What you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from B to A. Now, slope is equal to rise over run. Okay, so if you remember this, rise over run. Rise and run. Now, so M or slope equals rise over run, which equals... Uh, do, do, do. It's going to be, it rises up one, two, three blocks, which is worth three. The rise is three, and the run is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's going to be three over nine. The slope is a third. And remember, there's a formula called y equals mx plus c. M is the uh, slope and C is the intercept. Now we can see that the Y intercept is the number four. So now we know that Y equals a third X plus four. And if we multiply both sides by three, what we'll get is three Y equals X plus 12. Then move over to three Y and we get the same answer as we did before. Two different ways, same answer, okay? Now, what we're on to next is the uh, what we're on to next is the uh, equation. Find the area of the triangle ABC. Now, if I was to uh, draw ABC for one moment, okay. So ABC. So what we're going to do is link them together. As shown. Now, plus four over three, okay? So, what happens here is we need to translate down ABC, okay? So, ABC, what we're going to do is we're going to move A to the we're going to move the point A to 0, 0, okay? 
Now what this does is it moves the full triangle using what's called a translation, okay? And it creates a similarly sized triangle. Okay, so what we have is these three points here, okay? And we're gonna push A down to zero, zero, okay? So what in effect we're doing is we're gonna move A down, we're gonna move it down five blocks and to the left three, okay? We're gonna make a new point, D. Then we're gonna move B down five blocks, one, two, three, four, five, and across three. Okay, so down five, cross three. Okay, so down five, one, two, three, four, five, across three. And then finally, we're gonna move C down five, across three. So one, two, three, four, five, and across three. Now, when we link up this new triangle, we can see that it's actually the exact same shape and the exact same, uh, exact same shape and exact same size as uh, as the other triangle there that was made a second ago. Okay, so we can see that this new triangle works really well. Now to find the coordinates of these new points, okay, we know one of them is zero, zero. This one here is going to be minus nine minus four and the third one down here is going to be one minus nine. Now let's check how we do that without a graph. Okay, so what we do is we'd move A to zero, zero. We'd move B. Now we're going minus three to X minus 5 to y so then b will turn into minus 3 to x would be minus 9 and minus 5 to y would be minus 3 minus 9 minus 3 and that's what this one here is so minus 9 one second so 6 2 goes down 5 So we see the point B here was meant to be slightly further up. Okay, so the point B, excuse me here. Okay, so B was actually meant to be located as minus six plus two, which is here. And A was meant to be located here. So, excuse me about that. Okay, so we're just going to recreate this uh, this triangle here. Okay, I'm going to go down. So it's always good to check your work, okay? And now we can zoom out and see if it's actually the same shape, okay? Now, let's zoom out, and we still see it's the same shape, okay? So, in this case, it's the point minus, uh, the point G is going to be minus 9 minus 3 is what we're expecting, okay? And the next point, which is uh, down further, is the point uh, 1 minus 9. So, let's check to see if it works out, okay? So, minus 9 minus 3. Minus 3 to X brings it to 1. And minus four, minus five gives you minus nine. Now we know that all three points are correct, okay? So when we do that, we can now use these three points here. Okay, so these three points are gonna be used to find the area of the triangle ABC. Okay, so the area of the triangle ABC, and the point we're missing here is minus nine minus three. So the trick is with the formula, a half x1 y2 minus x2 y1 is basically, you never ever use zero zero as part of the uh, as part of the formula, okay? So you call whichever one you want, x1 y1, and this one x2 y2. The straight, the big two lines means whatever number you get, you always take the positive value. 
So if you have two big lines and minus 42, it means take the positive value because area can never be negative. Okay, so that's what the two big lines mean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get half of x1, which is one, y2 is minus nine, minus x2, which is minus one, and minus, uh, so x, oops, sorry, just got them mixed up there. Let's go again. X1 is one, y2 is minus three, x2, which is minus nine, and y1, is another minus nine. Put them in together, and what we're going to get is a half minus three minus 81, a half of minus 84, which is basically a half of 84, which is 42. So it's 42 square units, okay? Now, moving on, next question. The circle C has a center P at minus two, one, and passes through the point three, one. Show C, P, and Q on the coordinate diagram. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to draw our XY axis, like so. And then we're going to plot the point tree one. Tree one is here. And then we're going to call that point Q. Point P is minus two minus one, which is here. And then it has a center P and passes through Q. So you're going to get a compass. And what you do with the compass is you take it out. And we're going to uh, basically Make sure that this is the right size. So make sure that it's touch going, it's rotating around, actually sorry, rotating around P and going to touch Q. So you have to make sure that it goes right through Q. Nearly there. Okay, and this is your, going to be your circle here. Okay. And then just make sure you have a couple of uh, markings in to show that your scale. You have minus two, minus four, then you have another minus two, minus four there. Okay. Now find the radius of C and hence write down its equation. Okay. Now the radius is the distance between P and Q. Okay. So all we need to do is write down the, the two points P and Q. So minus two, minus one, and Q is three, one. To do this, we just find the distance formula. And this is X one, Y one. This one here is X two, Y two. So the distance formula is equal to the square root of X two minus X one squared plus Y two minus Y one squared and so what we get this time around is going to be 3 minus minus 2 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is going to be minus 1 minus minus 1 squared distance therefore is going to be uh, you can put all of this into your calculator if you would like So you can get a square root of a bracket three minus open bracket minus two close bracket bracket squared. Then you're gonna get plus open bracket one minus open bracket minus one close bracket close bracket squared. And you should get root twenty nine square root of twenty nine. Okay. Now. Or that's the radius, okay? So that's your formula, and we now know the radius is root 29. Now it goes find the radius of C, C stands for the circle, and hence write down its equation. So 
how are we going to go about writing out its equation, okay? So to write out its equation, you're going to look up the equation of a line, uh, equation of a circle formula. Equation of a circle formula is this: uh, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, h and k stands for the center of the circle. Okay, and the center center of the circle is minus two minus one. This means that h equals minus two, minus h therefore equals plus two, k equals minus one, therefore minus k must equal plus one. So what we're gonna get is uh, x plus two squared plus y plus one squared equals r squared. R squared is root 29 squared. Put that into the calculator, you get 29. This here is the equation of my circle. Okay. R is the point 0.16. By finding the slopes of PQ and QR, show that QR is a tangent to C. Now the next one is the point R is the point 0.16. By finding the slopes PQ and QR, show that QR is a tangent of C. Now R is the point 0.16. 1 and 6 up brings it up here. Okay? So it's just located just in here. Now what it says is QR, the line R to Q. So what we want to prove is that this line here is a tangent or perpendicular to PQ. We can see by diagram it is, but we really got to prove it, okay? So the first thing we know is we know that when two lines are perpendicular to each other, so if I have two lines that are perpendicular to each other, and if I say the first slope is, uh, if I say the slope of the first line is four over five, the slope of the second line has to be turn upside down and change the sign, minus five over four. To prove that two lines are perpendicular, we need to multiply them by each other and get minus one at the end. So what we need to do first of all is get the slope of PQ. We already have, uh, we need to find P, the slope of PQ, so we're gonna get minus two minus one is P, and Q is gonna be three one. So let's find the slope of this one, all right? So to find the slope of this, we're gonna use Y two minus Y one over X two minus X one. What we'll get here, x1 y1 x2 y2 so what we get is 1 minus minus 1 open brackets we're going to get 6 minus minus 2 and what we get is 2 over 6 plus 2 which is 8 which is a quarter now if the other slope is in fact perpendicular we're expecting it to be turned upside down change the sign we're going to get minus 4 so we'll find out now Okay, so this is the slope of PQ. Okay, now we're going to write down the point R, which is 1, 6. We're going to call that X1, Y1, and we're going to do the slope formula once again. Okay, and when we get the slope formula for this, we're going to get a, okay, X2, which is a, so Q is 3, 1. Sorry guys, x x x two is three. Okay, so it's three here. Make a three here, which is five two over five. Okay. So the slope is two over five. Okay. So we're expecting the perpendicular slope to be turned upside down, showing the sign, which is minus five over two. So we're going to do this, this uh, again. So we're going to get y2 minus y1, which is going to be 1 minus 6. x2 minus x1, which is going to be 3 minus 1. What we're going to get is minus, uh, so y2 minus y1. So the perpendicular slope is in fact minus 5 over 2 as predicted. Now to get full marks, to show that it's a tangent, what we have to prove is that one slope is perpendicular to the other. So what we can do here is we can say that two over five multiplied by minus five over two 
equals minus 1. Then we got minus 10 over 10 equals minus 1. Just by multiplying 2 by 5, 2 by 5, we're going to get minus 1 equals minus 1. Hence, they're perpendicular. Okay? So that's the end of that one there.